Hello, my name is Megan Worthington and I am from Southwest Baptist University and my research was over the analysis of cortisol and immunoglobulin G levels in calves. So first, the process of weaning beef calves is a series of abrupt and stressful events that elicit a series of physiological and psychological responses in cattle. The response of the calves to stress has implications for best management practices in animal husbandry and economic impacts to the beef cattle industry. The impact of stress on cattle on the activation and enhancement of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Activation of the HPA results in multiple step processes accumulating with the release of cortisol, a stress-related hormone. Cortisol release manifests as alterations to both physiological and psychological responses. For this research, the focus will be the physiological responses, more specifically, the effect of cortisol on the immune system through sampling and finding correlations between levels of cortisol in blood to IgG levels. The calves were randomly assigned to three groups, a control group in which the calves were not weaned or separated from their mothers, a fence group that was weaned and separated from their mothers by a pipe corral, and a flap group that remained with their mothers but had a plastic nose flap applied to prevent calves from nursing. The research was done at JMK Ranch, which is about 20 miles away from Southwest Baptist University. JMK Ranch provided nine head of seven to eight month old Angus and Charlay crossbred calves for our research. At T equals zero was when we weaned and when we vaccinated all of the calves. We collected blood samples via ventipuncture which we then collected on days 0, 1, 3, 5, 7, 10, 14, and 21. In the lab, after we collected samples via ventipuncture, we put the samples on ice and allowed to, the blood to clot. Then we centrifuged the samples to remove the serum. Next, we placed all of the purified blood samples on ice and Eppendorfers until further analyzation occurred. When we further analyzed the blood samples, we did this utilizing a 96 well microplate called an ELISA plate to capture for IgG and cortisol. And we got the following results. Here is a graph that shows different cortisol levels. You can see where there are asterisks, this indicates days that there are significant differences between means between groups. The three groups shown in the blue is a control group, which was left with their moms and allowed to nurse from them. The nose flap group, which had a nose flap and was allowed to be with their moms, but was not allowed to nurse from them. And their tr traditionally weaned group which was separated from their mom by a pipe corral. On the x-axis of this graph, we see that it is time. Time zero is when we started, and so on are days that we collected samples on. The y-axis shows picograms of cortisol per deciliter. From the first two sample periods, there was no difference in between the three treatments, but notice that on day three, the cortisol spikes and is significantly greater in the traditional group than in the nose lap and control groups. It is significantly greater at P is less than 0 0.001. At time zero, pretty much all of the calves were experiencing the same amount of cortisol release. 24 hours later, we see that the traditionally weaned calves are starting to experience stress and the cortisol levels are starting to increase. And 72 hours after weaning, we see a peak in cortisol from a traditionally weaned calf group. The average for this was about 650 picograms per deciliter for the traditional group, 
And for the other groups, it was around 400. So from this, we can see about a 40% increase in cortisol secretion. After days three, for days five and seven, we continue to see elevated levels of cortisol, but then they start to taper off as calves are adjusting to the weaning process. And then even on day seven, the cortisol level is still greater, but it is only significant to the P is less than 0.05 level. And by day 10, there is no difference in cortisol levels shown. Even though calves are experiencing the weaning process in the nose flap group, we see no increase in cortisol and we actually see a slight decrease in cortisol and the levels are very similar to what calves are experiencing when they were not weaned at all. We can also state that at no point during these 14 days is there a difference in the control and nose flap levels to any significance. Next, we'll look at the measurement of the IgG antibodies. We didn't sample at time zero, but X is the days that we did collect samples. On the Y axis is milligrams per milliliter of IgG and blood serum. Here on the graph, again, blue is our control group, which is calves that were not weaned away from their mothers. Green is a nose flap group, which is calves that were allowed to be with their mothers but had a nose flap place so they could not nurse from them. And red is the traditionally weaned group, which is calves that are completely separated from their mothers by a pipe corral. In this figure, we see that about seven days after vaccination, our nose flap calves are creating a significantly higher level of IgG compared to the traditional, and this occurs throughout the rest of the study, the IgG levels for our nose flap peak on day 21. And at no time during the study were the levels of antibodies different between the controlled non-weaned calves and the modified nose flap weaning method calves. We really are not observing much variation of IgG production in the traditionally weaned calves. Days one through five, none of the means were different and the average IgG and blood serum are the same. However, in days seven to 21, the means are significantly different at a P is less than 0.001 significance between nose flap and traditional groups. When we look at these two results comparatively, we can come to some conclusions. We see a huge difference at day three and day five. We see a peak of cortisol and following a vaccine, we have a huge amount of cortisol because of stress to the weaning process. So days that the cortisol is high, we can look to the second figure and as we look at it, we see that our immune response starts on day seven. So from this, we can hypothesize that the cortisol spike due to the stress inhibits the immune system reaction to the vaccine. Through the 21 days, the traditionally weaned calves IgG levels never approach the levels of the control and nose flap groups. Our data suggests that weaning methods that decrease the amount of stress that is experienced by calves will increase immune system functionality. And this is important because animal welfare is then increased because the calves are not experiencing as much stress. Additionally, the use of antibiotics in food would be able to be decreased as the immune system responses would increase with less stress. So, if we can decrease the cost of antibiotic usage throughout the process of raising calves, then the net return to the producer would ultimately be greater. We can see that an early stressor to calves then impacts the secretion of cortisol, a stress hormone, which negatively impacts how calves react to vaccines as we showed through the impact on IgG production. In the future, we want to conduct this experiment again and follow it for 45 days to see if the traditionally weaned calves ever would recover to the same level as the control and nose flap groups of calves in IgG blood serum levels. I would like to acknowledge Sigma Zeta 
for providing the opportunity for this research to take place through granting my students and I grants. I would also like to thank Dr. John Murphy for providing his ranch, the calves, the cattle, and everything necessary to keep them healthy. I would also like to give a big thank you to everyone in my research group, Ashley DeWeese, Katie Diepenbrock, Nicholas Schulte, Haley Stoner, and Kaylee Weiskopf. Thank you.